Barbara Cavadius. I'm here to talk to you about using your farm share. This is week two of our um, pickup for the farm share, and I wanted to um, talk to you about rice and veggies. I used to work at the main course restaurant in Madison, Wisconsin, and one of the staples that we had at the main course was rice and veggies. It was something we served every day along with pizza and some other things. And we learned, I learned some tips, which I'm gonna pass on to you. And I, I'm gonna also tell you how to incorporate that into your vegetable management. I, I have the wok already set up over here. I have an electric flat stove. So because of that, I use a wok that has a flat bottom. You're gonna want an oil that can handle high heat. So I like to use the avocado oil. You can use peanut oil. I mean, those are good. And then as one of my liquids, I like to use tamari. Some people use amino acids or other things. So one of the things I did, we had our share pickup today, and I went through my vegetable drawer to see what I had left over from last time, and I went through my drawers. So I found I still had one of my bok choys, but because I had stored it in the um, cloth bag that was wet in the refrigerator, it was still in beautiful condition. So I added that to one of the bok choys that we got from today's share. I also had some carrots, so I used two carrots. I'm gonna tell you about why I have these divided up the way I do in a minute. And I also had one onion left. You can see it's sprouting, but it's still very firm. So it's still in fine condition to use. And um, I'm gonna use the green differently from the base of it. I have these divided up in three different plates plus my greens. Essentially, I'm gonna start by cooking, starting the onion, and then I put in some of my stage one things, things that go in with the onion. And um, I have wanted to use some mushrooms. I also am gonna put in tofu. This tofu is firm. It's organic firm. I like extra firm, but I couldn't get it at the store. So when I was cutting it, there was water on my cutting board. So after I cubed them, I could see it was too wet. I took it in handfuls and I went to the sink and I squeezed it out a little bit. Not too much to crush them. They still are mostly still in nice cubes, but enough to get out some of that excess water, which just makes a mess. And after that gets started, then we'll add very firm veggies, in which case we have right now potato, because we're still getting some potatoes from last season, the carrots, and the beets. Um, I put in one beet, it'll make things kind of pink and red, but it'll be fine. So then we'll start with that, and I'll tell you about the other veggies as we go. I'm gonna start, I wanna get this onion cut before it's too late. I'm going to put the um, onion top in with my the next stage veggies, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I don't know why onions always do better if they go in first. But somehow, that's the way it goes. So you always want to cut my onion last so I'm not crying while I do everything else. But I, um, it always has to go in the oil first. I have it, the wok on a high temperature to get it good and hot. If, as I go, I'll be turning it down, but I'll start with it pretty high. So I like my um, onions in pieces. So I first slice them lengthwise after I cut it in half, and then I cut them across. Whoops, I dropped one. Okay, so they're ready. I've splashed some water on the wok. It's just sizzling. It's not bouncing. So we're going to wait another moment because it's not quite the temperature I'd like it to be. I want the water when I put the water in there, I want the water to kind of dance around. And now it's dancing around. I'll show it again, let's see. If you can see it's kind of dancing around as you splash it on there. So then, I'll put in, this is a non-stick wok, so I don't need that much oil. But you do need some in order to seal the vegetables. So I'll put the onions in first. I like to use a wooden flat 
spatula to stir things around. So just get the onion going. And once it starts to get a little bit transparent, then I'll add the rest of the early stage things. I'm adding the um, tofu and the mushrooms before I add the really hard things because I want the oil to seal them so they don't get mushy and just crisp them up a little bit. So, um, and the other, the other stage one veggies I'm putting in that are really hard because those are going to take longer to cook. They're going to have to steam a little bit before I add the stage two. You can see they're already starting to get just a little bit transparent and looking. Now I can add the tofu and the mushrooms. And they're just going to cook a little bit just to seal them up with the hot oil. I'm not going to cook them long because I have all these other really hard veggies. If I didn't have hard veggies to add, I would cook them a little bit longer than I'm going to now. Even though it's hotter at the bottom, the way the shape, the wok works, it does get hot as it goes up the sides. So I do, especially at the beginning when I'm wanting to sear the vegetables, I do bring them up a little bit up the sides so that they have more contact with high heat. So you can hear them kind of sizzling, I mean, just searing them. And then I'll stir it and let it sit another minute. While it's starting to cook, I'm going to start cutting my greens. I cut, put into the um, spinner both the bok choy leaves. The, the um, stems are in here in the stage two because they'll take longer to cook than the greens. But the greens I cleaned along with we got turnips this time, and if you remember from a previous video, I like to take the greens directly off the young turnips because it keeps those turnips nice and crisp. So I wash the greens, and I will use them in the stir fry. It's pretty delicious. And just do a little bit more here. I'm listening to the other. So it's just, they're just beginning a teeny bit yellow and brown. I don't want them to really brown. I just really wanted to just kind of sear them shut so they don't, they're all mushy. I'm just stirring them. I think it needs a little bit longer. But not a lot, so I don't want these to cook too much because otherwise, once you cook everything else, it'll get messed up. Inside my stage, the veggies that'll go in after I've steamed these, I have, I did buy some peppers. And then we have the baby turnips, and I also have the stem. I had watched e washed each of the leaves on the bok choy, and I pulled them off the stem. But when I was done, I still, on the biggest one, I still had a bit of stem, and it's totally fine to eat. So I like to um, cut the bottom of it off, but slice it, and use the stem of that bok choy as well. And here's all the... Um, the stems of the leaves. Then I have the onion green. It's kind of like putting in a, a, a green onion. And that's really all it is when it sprouts. So this should be, I hear it's slowing down. So I'm going to stir in my really, these are the top harder veggies. They're your more like winter-like veggies. It's potato, carrots, beets. These are going to take a little bit longer to cook, and they're going to want some steam to make it happen. I'll take this off too. So I stir it around, get it mixed in, make sure everything's cut up. I see this piece kind of stuck together a little bit. So what I'm going to do. A 
put a little bit of water in here. So I'm just going to put a little water in. I'm going to close this up because I coated everything. I'm going to put it on high because I want it to steam. And you can see this is, oh, I have a glass lid for my um, wok. And it's nice because I can see what's going on inside. And I know that there's moisture because it's steaming up and it's covering it. If it starts to get dry looking, I know I might be in trouble, so I have to keep an eye on it. So I'll finish cutting up the greens. Put them on the other plate. It's going to look like a lot of greens, but as you know from cooking greens, that they boil down. Or not boil down, but as they wilt, they're going to really get smaller. So I want a nice big high amount of greens. We also got some fresh herbs from the farm, and so I'm going to look at those and see which I want to put in, and I'll put those in with these softer veggies, because you don't want herbs to cook too long, because they lose their flavor and they get a little, like a money flavor a little bit if you let them cook too long, but getting a little bit and enough time for it to marry with some of the other vegetables is good. So let's see what we got. In our herbs, we got some sage, we got rosemary, got oregano, and we got thyme. So what do I want in here today? I think I'll put uh, thyme in. I think that'll be a nice flavor. And they put, they've made a nice bunch for us. Let me just take it out of the twist eye, twisty. I think I'll save the sage. Huh, I'll put oregano in too. So I'll put thyme and oregano. That'll be good. So some people don't like the stem, so you can just hold from the top and very gently pull down and then pop the top off of the um, thyme. Show you again, hold it from the top and gently whoops, pull down from the top. It's easier than cutting all that. And then just pull the top off. Otherwise you end up with a lot of stem in there. People don't always like the stem. If you don't mind the stem, feel free to cook it. If I put it in a soup, I might tie the herbs together and then, now see this is starting to flower. The, the flavor is highest on herbs when they are starting to flower like that, but they're totally edible. So you can just go ahead and put them in. So it's a good time, if you're growing any of your own herbs, it's a good time to pick them. You don't want them to go to seed. They will have lost their flavor by then. But that's the peak time to pick your herbs, is um, just as they start to flower. So doing that, I'm listening at the same time to the vegetables. You can see the condensation is running down the, from the top of the pan, so I know there's still moisture in there, which is good. I still, I'm still in touch. The main course was fun. It was a um, restaurant on campus in Madison, Wisconsin. We were housed at the um, YMCA building that had really been turned into a community building. And it was a collective. So we all took responsibility for running the restaurant and we all had, we all did grunt work, so like cutting all the veggies and taking turns serving at the windows and washing the dishes, but we all also took on special jobs. So I was a produce buyer and responsible for buying all the produce for the restaurant, and um, I was also apprenticed and was, became one of the bakers. I think Abe was one of my teachers. Abe, if you're watching this at all, hi. So um, Rebecca is still out there, and Judy and Katie, and um, 
Nanette. So there's, I'm still friends with some of those people. It's from a long time ago. I think it's probably been more than 35 years since I worked at the main course. But it was, it was really a fabulous experience and great to work with lots of other people and making sure that the largest number of people could get access to, nice, to good quality, delicious food at not very expensive prices. We didn't have table service, we had window service. So it was a lot of fun. So that's the time. It didn't take that much time to clean it up. But I'll put it in here with the other veggies. And then the oregano, you can also pull down from the stem, same way as you did for the thyme. But the leaves are a little bit bigger. I happen to love the taste of oregano. A lot of people find it a little bit intense. So the leaves are a little bit bigger, and I will chop them a bit so that no one gets a mouthful of oregano. Now it's really boiling, and it's starting to sizzle. So it means it's time to kind of check on this. The veggies are looking bright. I'm most concerned about the potatoes getting done. Those are the things that are the most... So I'm going to try pushing this into one of the potatoes and try picking one up. It's still a little, like not quite done. I want the potatoes to cook longer. I'm going to check my liquid level. You can see it's almost out of liquid. Okay. So I'm going to put some of the tamari in now because part of why it was starting to sizzle up like that was it was getting low on the liquid. So I'll put a little tamari in for flavor and let it steam a little bit longer. Nothing worse than undercooked potato. So I cut up, I'll just take another run on these. I don't know how many of you are, you do a lot with your knives. It's good with the knife to always leave the front of the knife on the cutting board and rock in action with your wrist. It's, it's better for your cutting board, it's better for your knife. And you can see it does a nice job of getting those all chopped up. And then when you scrape across your cutting board to get something off, you want to use the back side of your knife, not the cutting side. That'll preserve your edge better on your knife. All the things I learned working at the main course. Um, so at that point, just have to wait another minute. If people have questions when they see these videos or you want to know something, feel free to post a note. And if you like the videos, make sure you like them because that way It'll make sure that other people see them. And there's a, like a logarithm on YouTube and Facebook. So the more you like a video, the more it gets out there into the world. So if you find these videos helpful, um, share them with your friends and like them. I can also show you one of the things I did before we started making the veggies. So I was making my rice. I use brown rice. It does take a little bit longer to cook, but I have an Instapot. I love the Instapot. It's actually been staying warm now <laughs> for a while. But it, I just put in the, the rice in the water. I set it up, when I, because I'm using whole grain rice, I usually set it for multi-grain. And I, it takes only about 30 minutes to cook in here. And then it just keeps it warm inside the Instapot. You have to wait for the pressure uh, thing to go down. But that's it. I don't ever worry about scorching it. I don't worry about uh, burning my rice, which I've done on occasion. And so I find it easy. And if you do that before you start playing around with your vegetables, it'll be ready when you are. You don't have to worry about it. This is probably cooked long enough. And here it's starting to lose the salt up the liquid. I'm gonna put in my st these stage two veggies. These are veggies that don't need to cook a long time, just a bit. And stir them all together. Oops. I love how 
how you get all these different colors working together. It's good when you're cutting your vegetables for the different stages. Like when I cut my beets and my potatoes and my carrots, I try to make them about the same size. And the reason you do that is because they're going to be cooking for about the same amount of time. So I let them deal with that. I'm going to check the liquid level. It's almost no liquid left in here. So for this to steam, I'm going to put a little more of the tamari in. And I'm going to put a little bit more water in. Get plus angry sounding, softer sound. There's more liquid in there. I'm going to let it steam a little longer. So now the herbs are in there and the, um, the second stage of veggies, the softer veggies. So again, it was I used this time the turnips, the bok choy greens, peppers, um, and then a little bit of the, the green part of the onion, the sprouting part of the onion. If you had scallions, you would put the scallions in right now, which you will have pretty soon. Um, you just need it in there for a little while to get those, just really to bring out their color, make them a little bit softer, you just need them a little bit cooked. And then we'll put the greens in. And the greens, what I usually do is I put them in, stir it a little bit, and then you just want them to wilt. So just wait a, mo a few moments. Is there anything else? When you eat your rice and veggies, some people put more, I like to put a bed of veggies, a bed of rice down and then put my veggies on top. You can top it with nuts. You can top it with grated cheese. I have tofu in here, so I don't really need a lot more in there, but still sometimes it's fun to add in some cheese. You can use other grains instead of rice. You can use um, barley. You can use um, farro. You can make farro and mix it with lentils and, and things like that to amp up your protein and put it on a bed of that. Instead of having rice and veggies, which is probably a 60s, 70s thing, you can make grain bowls and have your veggies as one component, your protein and your grain on your plate however you want to eat it. But I, I like rice and veggies. It, it means it's, it's an easy dish to make. It's, it's something you can use all throughout the season. And as you have different kinds of vegetables, you can adjust your recipe to take into account what you have on hand. It's a great thing to use up the remains of what you've had from the last share, especially towards the end of your share when you want things to kind of just throw in. Um, I didn't have a lot left over at the end of the last year from the two weeks. It was, everything was in good shape, but it wasn't a lot left. So I really needed to wait for uh, today when I got the new fresh things. And there were a lot of wonderful things to add into the rice and veggies. So it's a good mix of using up what I had, using what's new, and making a new dish out of it. It's something that's easy to store in the re refrigerator when you, if you have leftovers. Store your rice or your grain separate from your vegetables, but then just put it together um, and nuke it or heat it up a little bit more on the stove when you're ready to eat it. I've also known when the kids were younger, I used to take leftover rice and veggies and the grain and I'd um, grind it up in the food processor with some oats and nuts and an egg. And I'd make my own veggie burgers. So you can do things like that. So there's lots, they're very versatile and there's lots you can do with them. See, it's nice, it's steaming nicely. There's liquid on here, but it's not all cloudy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and take a look at it. You see the vegetables, they're turning a nice bright color. So you can tell that they're cooking. I'm gonna stir them around. And I don't want the second stage veggies to get mushy, so I don't want it to be in here too long. I'm just going to take one of the bok choy stems. Hmm. It's getting nice and crisp and hot. So now I'm going to put all my greens in here. See, it fills up the wok. I'm going to cover it again. And we'll let it steam a little bit longer now with the greens in there. 
basically what you're wanting the greens to do is to um, wilt. So you can watch them a little bit. You want them to stay bright green. You don't want it to cook so long that they get dull. And you don't want it to just become a soupy mess. <clears throat> so you really just want them to wilt a little bit. And then I'll take the lid off. We'll stir it together and turn the heat off and get things together. But you can, I don't know if you want to come a little closer. You can actually see some of them wilting right in the pan as they go. Kids, it's, it's curling up. It's reducing. Before, when we first put the lid on, it was all the way full. And now you can already see that it's becoming reduced. But I don't want some of these greens to be raw either, so it's, it's a kind of a fine line. But you can see this is a very easy thing to do. The biggest thing is just cutting up all your veggies. And it just takes a little bit of prep work, but now Mom wants to get used to doing it. And especially at the beginning when you're first doing this, it's nice to put them on plates to divide it up to get you ready. Once you get the hang of it, you can put your um, onion and you know other things that you're putting in right at the very beginning and then just keep chopping. And then by the time the onions are ready, you're ready to put in the next stage. And you just keep going that way once you get the hang of it and once you build up some speed. So. But at the beginning, I would definitely use the plate method just to get you used to it. You can see it's much reduced. See how they're much, they're wilted now? So, yeah. I'm going to turn it off because there's still some residual heat. I'm going to stir them in so everything kind of marries together. And I'm taking care to kind of stir the greens a little bit as I do it as I stir them in so that it, they're not in clumps. So I'm just kind of running my spatula along the top and dragging it along as I stir it in so that I can prevent, I can spread it over the space and not have a clump of greens all in one place. Do you want the greens, now that they're wilted, see they're nice and wilted, but you want them to mix in with the rest of your veggies so that as you get your fork full of rice and veggies, that you will have a nice mix. Look how nice that looks. It's bright, it's, it's very fresh, very fresh looking. It'll be fresh tasting. And it's a great way to use a, a lot of the vegetables from your garden share and something that everyone will like in your family. If you have little kids who are kind of particular about foods being cooked together, one of the things that you can do, that I used to do with my kids, is take out, when you cut up your vegetables, save some of them aside raw and give them to your kids raw with the grains or, and then let them pick out the cooked ones that they like, just at the beginning, until they get used to having a variety of things. And that way little kids can do it. You can also have your little kids help you by tearing the leaves instead of cutting them. And by participating in cooking your rice and veggies, they might be more willing and interested in trying it out themselves. Well, thank you again. Thank you for uh, watching this video. Thank you for having a farm share. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section and we'll answer. If you have the question, there's a good chance someone else does. Watch our other videos and make sure that you join our, um, our farm group page. Thanks so much. See you soon.